Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Ecom Leaders Podcast. I have a very special guest with me today, a co and also basically podcaster, huge podcaster in the Amazon space, actually, uh, with the Amazon Seller Round Table. And you put them in separate round table. If you put round table together, it doesn't show up. I search and I can't find it with round table. Put it separate. But anyway, uh, co host of the Amazon Seller Round Table and founder of Amazing at Home Coaching, Consulting, Course, all these different things I have today with me, Amy Weiss. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Erin. Awesome. It's good awesome. to be here. <laughs> yes. Great to have you. And um, you, you are, you're so um, upbeat. I feel like as soon as we got on the call, I'm just like, boom, this is a person who can talk, who can say what's on the mind, has a bunch to say, knows so much stuff. I mean, I'm impressed. Like in a couple seconds, we're talking like war planner, uh, <laughs> literally war, like literally war planner, uh, freaking <laughs> consulting, hacker, coder, freaking uh, like... Uh, we'll, we'll, we'll find anything on your phone, anything you thought you've deleted, <laughs> anything on the internet that if you, if, if Google had it ever, you'll be able to find it. So anyway, it's kind of interesting, uh, just in a couple seconds that we've been talking all the different things that you do. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't usually advertise that since, you know, <laughs> I don't want people to be intimidated by that. I mean, but it's a good thing that there are um, good hackers in the world, you know, yes. people that that understand how to do all of those things because there are also bad hackers. And so, you know, the, the good hackers, you know, people like me who have some of those certifications and stuff for my former career, I don't do that anymore, but um, so I don't really practice that stuff anymore, um, but I learned a lot from it. But, um, you know, the, the, the good people are, are really good to have around um, and, and kind of help really protect America's infrastructure. Nice. Uh, you think of our banks, you know, everything like that. It, software wasn't really created with security in mind, nor was the web really created with security in mind. So it's really good um, to, to have that. And it's funny on the Amazon side, you know, since I've been doing Amazon consulting, I've run into many cases of people like just giving their passwords. You don't have to hack it if you give them your password. <laughs> it's just, just saying guys, you know, so it's so important. You know, I've seen people lose entire, um, I think one guy, um, he was, he ordered, um, pictures off of Fiverr. And, um, and there was, it's very easy to embed um, malware and stuff into pictures. Mm -hmm. And so he downloaded the pictures, I'm guessing. Um, and, um, and then before he knew it, probably a key logger on his system. And uh, before he knew it, he was locked out of his own Amazon account. The person um, ex uh, took his inventory out of his account and sent it off somewhere and also cleared out his whole account. So he lost like over $40,000. Mm -hmm. And there was not like the only thing that he realized was that he was locked out of it. He tried to call Amazon, tried to do something. And it was just, it was too late. And then there was nothing he could do, you know? So the only thing he could track it back to was those images he bought on Fiverr. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, I mean, images, you know, from the digital forensic side of things, you wouldn't believe how much data that can be hidden inside of images and, um, and also gleaned from images. You know, mm -hmm. all the images you take on your phone, um, they all have location data in there. So, you yeah, know, um, don't, you know, don't, it, it would be easy to, to frame someone for something. <laughs> you could know? just, just put, put your input there on you or whatever. So if anyway, we're getting so dark because <laughs> starting this conversation off so dark. Well, I'll tell you, it is, like you said, the white hat is also so important because I'll tell you, well, I'm in Clearwater, Florida, and there's a company here who, I believe the first unicorn, so billion dollar valuation in Clearwater, all of Clearwater is a um, separate security firm called No Before. And all they do is train staff on it because yeah. your staff are the people who normally will give away all your stuff but back to the, accidentally. So anyways, it's super, I mean, it's like such a huge industry because we do need to protect it. Just like you need to do the same thing to protect your Amazon Amazon accounts, right? We signed yeah. up, for, uh, I get, we're using Century Kit. Um, but when we got Century Kit, it was like, it was a, a lifesaver because before, you know, I wouldn't notice. And like, I'd have to see like my sales and like that hour, the sales were, were, were so crashed. And I realized it was something that had happened. Then with Century Kit, I get alerts. So it's like, okay, lost five bucks, lost whatever. And now we have somebody handling that. Uh, that was a huge piece. It's the, fen the fence is important always, right? And as you get more things and more valuable and you have a brand and you have things, your defense is more important than ever. 
So. Yeah, you know, you see people um, definitely hiring companies like Red Points for intellectual property defense. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that was something as an inventor, you, I invented a product and that was something, you know, you think when you come up with an idea for a unique product that you think might have some merit, the first thing that comes to your mind is, okay, I have to patent it or, you know, how do I protect it? Mm -hmm. And people falsely believe that a patent is going to protect them. The patent mm. itself doesn't protect them. The patent, them. the patent itself gives them the ability to litigate, mm. but that also costs money, right? So I, I completely agree. As you grow and you grow and you become more valuable, you really need to be thinking about not only brand defense in terms of advertising, making sure that you know, that real estate on the page is so important. Mm -hmm. uh, we see all of these brands taking the time. And, you know, I know you guys are familiar with this with Samurai Seller, but taking the time to really make sure any of their variations are taking up those ads inside mm -hmm. of the product pages. And then we see um, them doing brand defense with um, companies like Red Points, which will reach out to anyone who even claims to use that trademark or a trademark close to it so that they're really protecting the space inside of their category. And, you know, there's, there's so much. Do you, there's, do you use red point? I do not. Okay. No, not yet. Yeah. They've reached out to me before and I was like, Hey, we got this on the control. Like forget about it, but it's okay. I'm just wondering, you know, you brought them up and yeah, definitely. Or, or, or digital. They're like digital. Yeah. So they just kind of keep it. And as far as I know, I had a, a few clients who've used them before and I've been reached out to because I used to do, um, I used to do like wholesale and retail arbitrage on Amazon. I've been on Amazon since 2007. So oh. I've been there for a little while, you know, I've tried a lot of different business models and just had fun with Amazon. Right. But uh, when I was doing reselling, okay. I had, you know, somebody from Red Points reach out and it was for a brand that I was selling, right? That came from retail. And, you know, a lot of the bigger brands that are in retail do a lot of the brand defense. And so, you know, companies like Red Points will send out, you know, letters to kind of warn you, hey, you're not authorized to sell this, this brand, um, you know, that kind of stuff. So uh, that's how I got familiar with it. Okay, good, good. And can you explain what, what was a product you made? Is that public information? And uh, how, how did how did you do that? Well, yeah, you can you can Google it, me, I'm sure, you know, and, and figure that out. Uh, it's it's I came from um, it, I came it came from an idea because I have three cats mm. and the biggest problems with cats is what? What do you think the biggest problem with cats uh, is, Aaron? Do you have cats? Oh. For me, I'll tell you the biggest is allergies. I'm so allergic to cats. I don't oh, want them yeah, in, my a... in my face. So that's my that's my biggest problem is having them around. Yes. <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, hey, they got there lost. are so many people that have allergy issues. And so my product actually helps with allergies as oh. well. Um, because a lot of the allergens are caused. It's funny, the guy who helped me kind of prototype and build my product um was deathly allergic to cats Ooh. so he would come over we built a 3d printer together and um and he would come over and like bring the prototypes over and we would try it with the actual litter boxes so my product is a litter box cleaner oh. um so it just makes it very easy to clean the litter box you just pick the litter box up you pour it in and it separates the waste from the clean litter and it has like a little holding bin below and uh and then you just dump out all the nasty at one time so you're not like in there scooping for treasures yeah, yeah. you know it's just gross right <laughs> but um but the, the thing is, whenever you, you mess with that litter, you know, you stir up the litter, there's a lot of allergens and hair and everything that comes out of that. And there was this, there was this girl at my gym, she just got a new cat and she was like, she was taking these pills or whatever to, uh, she's a little bit allergic, but she really wanted a cat. And, um, and she was taking the pills and everything and she was still having such a hard time. She was keeping the cat in her bedroom, everything like that. Um, and, um, she was like, you know, I just, I'm still having such a hard time with my allergies. And I said, well, is the litter box in the bedroom? And she was like, yeah, it is. I was like, get it out of there Whoa. and get it out of there. And cause a lot of people have like attached bathrooms and stuff. Yeah. Right. So, you know, a lot of people keep litter boxes in their bathroom or in their laundry room. Well, anyway, I told her, get it out of there and it's going to get rid of, you know, all of those extra allergens. Every time the cat uses it, it you know, really just stirs things up. So anyway, it's kind of gross to, to think, but I make some money from dealing with cat poop. Right. How many, so, <laughs> How much of that product did you sell? How many of that thing did you sell? Oh my gosh. 
thousands now. Yeah. So, and we are expanding into retail this year. We've already sold uh, in a few different uh, retailers. We got a purchase order from Walmart recently. Nice. So, oh, wow. um, so we're working on, you know, really expanding. My goal by the end of 2021 is to be firmly established in one major big box retailer. Um, and then my goal in 2022 is to sell it. I'd like to sell it and play again in a different category. <laughs> um, not that I don't love pets. I have, you know, lots of products in the, in the pet side of things, but, um, but yeah, it's just a lot of fun, right. To yeah, really. create different things. And, um, but yeah, so that's kind of the story. I mean, I, I have a, a business background other than my military background. I went to school for business. I used to be an executive at target, you know, mm. before I joined the military, I, I worked in retail um, and in the restaurant world. So you know, it wasn't, it wasn't foreign to me, but even though I went to business school and I have an MBA and all that kind of fun stuff, I had this idea for a product and I was like, okay, I know I can launch it on Amazon because I've been selling on Amazon for fun, mm -hmm. you know, but how in the heck do I take this idea, this ugly prototype that I went to Home Depot and built, you know, how do I take that and like turn it into something real? you know, turn it into an actual product? How do I find a supplier for that? How do I make molds? How do I do all of that? So that's this is what a very, I, yeah, This is like 2007. This is like right when you're- No, 2017. 2017 is when okay, I came you were, You've already idea. been selling on Amazon for a long time. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but just as a hobby though, not like, a, I mean, I had a, I have had a really good job, everything like that. So it was just as a hobby. Like I started, when I was in college, I started flipping textbooks on Amazon. Um, mm -hmm. Okay. So that I saw that little sell yours here button and then, you know, that just changed things. <laughs> so I just started flipping like everything in my house. You know, I was like, oh, I don't use these CDs anymore. Let's sell them on Amazon. I don't use this, you know. And then I would like go to thrift stores and find things. So, uh, and then we were stationed in Hawaii with the military. So I stopped doing it because back then it was like merchant fulfilled. So I just took a break for a couple of years. And then I came back here. I, we moved, we retired from the military. We moved to San Antonio in 2014. And I started a job in cybersecurity uh, with the Air Force. And, um, and that in 2017 is when I came up with this product idea. So I hadn't been selling on Amazon for a few years in that took a little break in between there. Um, and um, was really busy with the cybersecurity stuff and with kind of growing the career ladder thing. And I came up with this idea and I get migraines, really bad migraines, mm -hmm. um, and they're triggered by smells. So um, it, for me, I didn't want to have to get rid of my pets. That wasn't acceptable to me. And I've tried every kind of litter box. I tried every kind of scoop. I've tried every kind of litter and nothing worked. And so we were cleaning the litter boxes twice a day. It was just gross, you know, and nothing was working. So I was like, you know, there has to be a better way. Like, there, we haven't innovated. Think about like either whether you have a dog or a cat, we are right. still like manually cleaning up the duty. Mm -hmm. Like, come on, we have not innovated on that in so long. So I'm like, you know, there just has to be a better way. So every time Someone I would travel- invent a cyber litter box someday. Where it, goes <laughs> and it, it just disappears and goes to another dimension. That would be, that would be the ultimate invention. I Maybe. know, right? What to not have to do it at all to just make it disappear? That would be great. I don't know that I'm I'm uh, I'm that sophisticated, <laughs> but you know, it's a cool idea. Here. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, that's that's kind of where it came from. But it it was really a journey from go, from going from flipping existing products on Amazon to starting yeah, your own you. brand. It's really something different, right? Absolutely. It's really you know, you have to treat it like a business. You really, you know, and, and for me, I started like reaching out to all these design companies and stuff like the invent helps and stuff. And, and, you know, I tried out for shark tank and, mm -hmm. and I thought that that was like the path. Right. But what I was hearing from these design companies and stuff is like, okay, well, we can take your drawings here and, um, and, you know, for about $30,000, we'll turn them into like a CAD drawing. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. And I was like, um, no, Yeah. <laughs> I see businesses out here bringing new products to market all the time. There has to be a better way. And so I started just like cold calling manufacturers, like, hi, I have an idea. I need to talk to manufacturers. Like, you know, in the US, is that US manufacturer? Yeah. Oh. Yep. And my product is made, that product is made in the U S the rest of my products are made in China, but uh, but yeah, I started just reaching out to them and some of them would be like, oh yeah, you need a, is a plastic manufacturer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
Okay. So you just called and they answered your phone? Like, can you yeah, make- you know, I'm not shy. I'm very, <laughs> you know, I, yes, I, I, I've gathered that. I'm very straightforward. I'm, you know, uh, uh, yeah. So, you know, with my military background, I'm, I'm pretty good at, at, uh, at, doing Ask. things diplomatically and you know um very straightforward and professionally so i just started calling and saying hi you know um get, getting to know people and just saying hey you know I, I have this idea i have this prototype do you have any resources that you know i could reach out to and i learned about product designers i learned about all kinds of things and i just started kind of going on this journey to create it. and then while i was doing that i was sharing mm-hmm. you know sharing on facebook i had a little facebook group um, just like a hundred people. And I don't even know where those hundred people <laughs> came from initially. And um, I started just sharing my journey. I was like, Hey, you know, you guys have an idea for something. This is what I've kind of learned. And, um, and yeah, my husband and I just kind of went on this journey and now both of us work from home full time. And, um, and we get to do this between our consulting business and, um, and we get to help other entrepreneurs do the same and, um, and then, you know, grow our private label brand and, and have fun with cat people at the same time. <laughs> ah, that's amazing. Oh, that's so cool. And so how, how long did it take you to, you know, I guess, replace your income um, and, and do that transition, right? You, you did the product, I'm assuming you patented it. And then you mm-hmm. just, you, you eventually succeeded with a U.S. manufacturer, got it produced. And then what was that run? What did that runway look like to, I guess, the financial freedom from? Yeah. So yeah. first, the first um, we, well, we launched a bunch of other products too, like at the same time, at the same I, oh, that's yeah, same. because I, I didn't want, it was taking me a long time. You know, I had to have molds made and all this other stuff. And so while I was doing that, I was studying all this stuff, um, and learning more about private label. Uh, we went to some training by Damon John, the shark tank guy. Yeah. Right. And we learned about FBA, like that, that opportunity was being presented there. And remember when I started on Amazon, it was mostly like merchant fulfilled FBA wasn't like a big thing. Mm-hmm. And so I had that little break in there. And so we learned about that. And then we started but Damon John was pitching an FBA course. Well, he had like a team that probably paid to use his name, you know? So like we went to a hotel here in San Antonio for like a weekend seminar and they did a lot of stuff on mindset, a lot of stuff on finance, a lot of stuff. And then they, at the end, they talked about the FBA opportunity as part of that. But he wasn't there. Damon John wasn't there. No, they used his picture and his name and all that to get you in the door, right? But I don't regret it at all. I mean, that was actually a game changer for us. We learned how to, from that seminar, that weekend long seminar, we learned how to um, get funding for our business. So we got 0% interest financing, um, $160,000 within a week. What? So that alone well, was worth it. So, like what? Uh, what? Ben? Yeah, they had, they had resources. So we found out about this funding company, basically that if you had good credit, you could get access to funds depending on your credit and both him and I had great credit. So we utilized that invention or to just do business or to what? Well, I had a business plan at that time, right? Cause you know, I have background, my, my degrees are all in business. So of course I had my business plan surrounded by my product and, you know, a whole brand that I was going to build out. So I knew how much money I was going to need. I knew my molds were very expensive, you know, five figures were my mold costs. Um, so there was a lot of startup expenses. I had website expenses, trademark expenses, patent expenses, all that kind of stuff. So I knew I needed funding and I made a lot of money at my job, but you know, it's good Take to have that cushion. Life, yeah, I understand. yeah. So I, when learning about this from, you know, that seminar, it was really cool because we came home, we got all that additional funding and then we learned about FBA. And it's funny because my husband, Rashid, his um, buddy in the military that he served with actually was doing like six figures a month retail arbitrage on Amazon. Wow. And he was selling like Nike shoes and my husband loves Nike. And so I told him, I was like, dude, you were deployed with him. Like go spend like a week with him, go spend a week with him and learn what he does. Cause oh. he's must be doing something right. Right. So we sent my husband to Colorado to spend time with his friend and um, that was he learned, year. sorry. What year was that? That was in 2017. Okay. So like this whole thing was happening. We were coming up with the idea and all of that. 
And so then he came home from that and we started with the FBA knowledge. We used the retail arbitrage model to start just flipping and learning more about this process before just jumping totally into private label, right? Then we did some wholesale stuff because I got annoyed trying to replenish inventory from Walmart, yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. I, I didn't want to play that game. I was like, no, there's a better way to do this the yeah. business way, right? So I started calling up companies and I got really good at writing listings and making bundles. Mm. Um, so I started calling up companies and I'd be like, hey, I see that your competitors are kicking your butt on Amazon. This is exactly what I can do to improve that. And your product would fit really well in my store. So I'll open up a wholesale account with you at the same time. And so I did that. I never had any wholesaler tell me no. They were like, wow, that's oh. really great. You know, normally we don't like Amazon sellers. And I'm like, well, I know what I'm doing. So let's go. <laughs> but um, so, you know, we just, we got a lot of really great wholesale accounts. Um, some, we made some buying mistakes too. We still have some old like dead death pile inventory. You know, I think all of us Amazon sellers do, right? Mm -hmm. But- or, um, is this, is this a pet, pet wholesale stuff? Or you just- did, so, you Yeah, know? that. And then we did some stuff in home as well. Mm -hmm. And, you know- so then this was like the progression, right? So then I um, started, I found a couple of private label products along that line that, um, that seemed like good deals. I saw opportunities in the market, all of that. And I was like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to launch these other three products at the same time. And so I did, I, I invested in three other products. I found manufacturers on Alibaba, right? And just you know, I didn't know back then before I had a China trip and all this stuff, I had no idea the difference between a factory and a trading company or all these things. Like all these things happen for a reason. It was this mm -hmm. wonderful progression of learning about all these different categories and listings and, you know, and that's what made me a really good copywriter. That's actually how Amazing at Home ended up being born because uh, I was copywriting. I, at first I was hiring people on Fiverr to write my mm -hmm. listings. Yeah. And then with my background, you know, I was like, you know, I kind of hacked this. So I was like, okay, I can see these keywords and this, this isn't working. And then at the same time, Andy and I were starting to talk and I was learning a lot more, even more about SEO from him. And I was working with his beta tool um, and it's still the best for writing listings. His tool mm -hmm. is incredible. It's like mm -hmm. a secret weapon for organic ranking. Um, so, you know, I was and using seller, that. Seller SEO? Mm -hmm. Yeah, he has a listing tool in there called Listing Lightning and it's so good. Um, okay. it's We're using Zanguru now for that, which I know I said you, you use Zanguru as well. Yeah, I have Zanguru as well. Yeah. But not for writing listings. No, okay. I, okay, I, I'll, use, I'll I use his tool. It's just so good. I've written. So, so anyway, I started, you know, I would have some wholesale buys that wouldn't sell, you know, cause I was buying from some bigger wholesalers. So I figured out, I was like, you know, I could definitely do a better job at this listing optimization thing. And I speak native English, you know, because some of the stuff I was yeah, ordering on yeah. Fiverr was coming back, you know, whatever. And I would still have to like wordsmith it. Um, and so I started writing these listings and I would be able, I would just switch the category or call it something else or find a keyword opportunity or create a bundle and call it something or create a multi-pack, whatever it was. And I realized that listing optimization is literally like, one of the most fundamental skills you have to have. It's going to affect mm -hmm. your PPC. It's mm -hmm. going to affect everything else that you do. And if you know how to do that well, that's one of the best Amazon hacks you can have. So I learned how to do it really well. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to put a service on Fiverr. So I put a service of me writing listings on oh, Fiverr. Yeah, okay. And yeah, and I had all these people come to me with impossible products, like felt letter boards, stuff that had like 50 pages on Amazon, you know, and you're like, dude, you're not going to sell this. And this one guy came to me, I'll never forget. And he was like, well, my felt letter board is pink. And I was like, dude, nobody's looking for a pink felt letter board. Like, yeah. that's not a keyword that I can, what? It's, it's not going to sell, man. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, just hang on. Let me think about this. And so I went and did the research and I was like, all right, this is the perfect baby shower sign. This is the perfect office sign. So I started thinking about other keywords that this could be listed under. Well, all the felt letter board people were using felt letter board. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, hey, I'm just going to rewrite this listing. And this is a receptionist sign. That's what this is. Mm. And we wrote the whole listing for that. We did his photos for that and he sold out. 
And so word spread. And before I knew it, I had all these people coming to me and I was like, okay. Uh, and then people were like, how did you do that? I want to consult with you. How, how do I set a meeting up with you to like talk with you? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't have a way to do that. So yeah. I built, literally built my amazing at home website. Uh, I had the domain name because I was going to do like a vlog on YouTube about people doing cool things at home. So I bought the domain name and I was like, you know what? I'll just use this domain name. It's, <laughs> I had no idea that we were going to become top three consultant in the world or, you know, whatever. And now the logo that you see today is not the logo I started with. You know, this one was designed by people who worked on movies and stuff. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, it was really a, it was just such a crazy thing. So now, you know, I have a listing optimization masterclass and I really help people focus on, what is it that you're selling and yep. what is it that the customer is going to connect with you on? And if you have a really saturated product, is there another keyword opportunity that you're completely missing that, you know, and a lot of times you're not going to find that on software. Right. You have to get in the mind of the customer and go, what else is it called? Because if you just reverse search your competitors, you're going to find the same keywords everybody else is using. So you have to get in the mind of the customer. You have to do a little bit of outside research and you have to go, okay, what else could this be used for? And in some cases, you're not going to be able to find anything, right? Sure, it, sure. Yeah. If it's an iPhone case, it's an iPhone case, you know, right. it's, like it's case, not a case to hold the cat litter. You know what I mean? It's just not. Just, yeah, exactly. It's, but I mean, there's so and, and much power in that. One piece of that is too, it also helps tremendously in your ads because not only do you then yes. go somewhere, but you also can advertise on those things. And, and sometimes very obscure keywords do convert. I've seen, we've seen that like many times. And as you mentioned, Aaron, I mean, it really affects your PPC placement because PPC placement, the very first factor is relevancy. Yep. And if you are not relevant for that keyword and you bid on it, in most cases, unless you're doing like a product targeting campaign, your placement is going to suck. You're going to be in no man's land. And it, no matter if you have a really high bid, because you're in competition with all of these other bids that are more relevant. So it's, it's really important that you understand the link between the keywords in your listing and how that affects your advertising. I was on a call with a client the other day mm -hmm. and um, she was asking me, should I continue with this product? And we looked and she could have been on page one for her main keyword, but she just didn't have, she was on page three for her mm -hmm. main keyword. And I looked at her listing and the order that she had the phrases for that main keyword. Mm -hmm. First of all, she didn't have that phrase intact, big mistake. Yep. And it wasn't in her title. It wasn't like repeated mm -hmm. in her first uh -huh. bullet point and another, there wasn't a lot of like related phrases to it. And so I told her, I said, okay, the one, the product on page one for this, that your product is better than is literally doing like four times the sales of you. Mm -hmm. You're on page three. That's why you're not getting sales. Your ads aren't even showing up before page three. And it's because you don't have those relevant things in your listing. So should you consider with this, pro continue with this product? Uh, yes. Look at all the potential that you have. If you can just fix your placement and your keywords, then suddenly I had another client in the UK and he had um, several product lines. He was a big, he was a big seller in retail. So he had sold millions in retail and he comes to me and, um, and we look at his product lines. He had four different product lines and he was coming to me to actually decide how to hire a new ads team. Cause he had an ads team. And so I work with like a lot of service-based businesses. I help people kind of fix their businesses. And so he comes to me and he's like, Amy, I really want to know, like, how do I hire a better ads team? Like my ads team isn't really performing. And so we took a look at his listings and sure enough, he had so much potential. He was, he had Amazon's choice badges for stuff nobody searches. <laughs> so I was like, we got to get rid of these Amazon's choice badges and we're going for some new ones. Right. So I was like, don't fire your ads team yet. I took a look at his PPC. His PPC looked great. He was bidding on all the right keywords, but those keywords were not in his listing. Mm -hmm. And so we redid his, we optimized his listings one line at one product line at a time. And of course his ads started popping up on page one. His products were now on page one and tripled his sales with the first wow. line in That's less amazing. than a month. 
Wow. Less than a month. And then I was like, dude, your ads team is great. Like you see your ads all over page one now? Like that's what happens when you optimize your listing, right? And so we did that. Yeah. And then we just, we continued that process through the rest of his lines and his sales have gone like five times what they were before and he's dominating page one. So the next step is brand defense, right? Because he has all these variations. So the next step is like, you wouldn't believe how many people are not using brand registry ads, right? Do you see that, Aaron? You mean, a tons, lot? Tons of brand ads, like uh, headlines. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Like any to any of the type of you know ads that are available to register brands. I guess we could say it that way. But you know, so much real estate is available to you that you you might not be using. But the bottom line is, if you have a broken foundation, if your listing doesn't have the right keywords in it, and you're really not thinking customer centric and you're not thinking about where's your placement, you can spend all the money you want on ads and it's not going to matter. Yeah. And, and I, t- I tell it to people all the time. I'm like, hey, your main image, your listing, having a video, these things will change your ads dramatically. And so I really appreciate you doing that for the seller. Again, I don't know them, but I'm sure they're extremely happy with you. And I'm sure you're charging absolutely nothing. And like, it's not like a percentage of the lift. It's like, boom, a one-time call, a couple-time call. And you have this huge um, thing. And so in your coaching, do you actually then write the listing or you have the class or like, what is, what do you um, like? So you like- I'm also a copywriter. So I love writing listings. Um, so people do order listings from me, um, but it's always up to the client. So sometimes in this case, um, the client wanted to learn because Ooh. it's such a fundamental skill. Yep. So I have my listing optimization masterclass is literally, it's like, you could start your own agency by the time you get through it. Cause not only do we cover, yeah, not only do we cover, like we cover how to find your main keyword. We cover how to write compelling copy that actually explains the differentiation that matters to the mm-hmm. customer. And then we cover how to design seven photos that convert based on those, that listing. We give you a five bullet template that converts like crazy. And then we teach you how to add SEO to your writing. So it's not just keyword stuff. It looks great. We teach you how to write a great title, um, how to get organically on page one. You know, I've rewritten listings from hundreds of, of sellers that have gotten listings professionally written by agencies. Mm-hmm. Right. And I've rewritten those listings and put them on page one. And, and so the, how much, either how much is it or where do the, where does someone sign up if they want that? Uh, or if we want to try that, like where do we go to get that service? Oh, just amazingathome.com. Okay. You can come check us out. Amazingathome.com. But... Perfect. Yeah. We'll put that in the show notes as well. And uh, people definitely need help with the listings. And I'll tell you, we've, we've tried many, well, not many, I've tried a couple of agencies uh, and different things. And we have also various softwares and we've done internal teams. We've had uh, Philippines teams, we've had US teams. We've had so many different things. I mean, look, yeah. bottom line for me, I think the product is the most important thing. Yes. And you kind of, if your product is really good, it's almost like your listing. If it's, you know, kind of good, you're, you'll be fine. If your product yeah. is the same as everybody else's product and you have nothing special, your listing better be like absolutely freaking spectacular. Top notch, so, right? <laughs> you know, I, we like to focus on product, but um, obviously the listing, and I've seen the, the images for me, the main image is the absolute number one uh, driver. But uh, what have you seen? Like the main image is you, you agree with that or what do you think converts or helps people buy the most on, on a listing? So main image is important, right? But the big thing over the copy is the images that follow after they click. So -hmm. they're going to click. If you've got an ad at the top of the page, they're going to click. The question mm -hmm. is, are they going to convert? And the only answer to whether they're going to convert, and this is the big thing, the big problem that I see that people make with their photos. And this is why we include a seven photo strategy. Mm -hmm. And I'm happy to walk through those photos. Mm -hmm. Um, So the thing is, a lot of people, they don't think about the sales process when they're creating their listing or their photo layouts. Mm -hmm. So a customer comes to your listing, they're not reading it. They're not reading it. They're flipping through those photos. They're not seeing your EPC yet, your A plus content, whatever we're calling it now. Um, They're not seeing that. They're going through those photos at the top of your page. Yes. And if those photos do not answer the questions that they have, how big is it? What's included with it? Why should I care and buy this and not another product? Mm -hmm. How can I trust you that this is quality? Mm -hmm. Um, 
Is there other uses for it? Can I see it in my life? If you're not covering those things, they're not going to convert. They're going to move on. And what I see so many times is people will just have like a bunch of pictures of just like features, or they'll have a bunch of infographics with a ton of text. You've got to use icons because people look at the icon and then they read the text underneath the icon because it's just like a brain thing, right? So we always do them in this order. We do main photo. Yep. The second photo always shows why you should buy this product and not a competing product. Mm, Your strongest selling photo. point. Yep. Second photo. The third photo is always what's included. So wait, wait, what do let's I get? Back up to the second one, back up to the second one. And maybe it's in your course, but are you going to do a, like a comparison image right away? Like, hey, the competitors have this, we have this, or it's, for example, my, ours is the biggest in the market and you, you don't talk about the competitors, or I guess it's case by case. Case by case, right? So the whole reason that one of our 10 classes is just defining your USP mm -hmm. is for that reason, because you really want, if you're selling this water bottle, right? If you're selling this, Right. And I know those listening can't hear it, but it's a pretty plain, boring yeah, water bottle. Yeah. Right? I mean, it's kind of sparkly. It's not that it's pl sparkly. It's sparkly. Kind of sp good. I paid five dollars for it at the five and below <laughs> store. Right. But it's sparkly. If I'm selling this water bottle, it's the same as everybody else's water bottle. Right. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, all I have to do is create doubt in the customer's mind about other water bottles. I have to focus on what the customer cares about. So in this case, this is a double, double walled mm -hmm. water bottle. It's gonna keep my water cold, right? It has a straw, it has this really great sealable lid. So all I have to do is focus on one feature that leads to a benefit that they really, really care about and do a better job than my competitors of explaining that. Like our water bottle is specially designed. Like the thickness of the walls is specially designed to keep your water colder longer. And our straw is made of a material that is so easy, easy to clean over other popular materials on the market, something like that, right? And but, so, um, okay, okay. so sometimes yeah. you'll, put, you'll put the picture, that com like a comparison image, like ours versus theirs, which is yeah. You put that right away in the second image. Well, only if... I wouldn't necessarily do a comparison photo um, as the second image. What I'm saying is whatever you choose to be your strongest selling point. USP, yeah, take the USP. Then right. you have to show that in a photo. Yeah. So the reason that we always, because bullet point one for us in our listing is always your USP. So you write that out and then you have a photo that represents it. Bullet mm. point two is always what's included because that's how the customer's mind work. The customer goes, why should I care? Ooh, I like it. And then they go, wait, what do I get? And so immediately, not only are you taking them through that process in your photos, but you're also taking them through that process in your listing. So, you know, you write the listing first, why should I care what's included? And then the third bullet point and the next photo in the series is always your risk-free guarantee or quality guarantee. So you want to show them that you care about them. You're a legitimate brand and you're not going to say, oh, we have a 30 day return policy. Mm -hmm. uh, why? Because that's going to fail at day 31. No, right, right. this is the absolute best quality and we care about our customers. Show that in a photo. You put that on the third, third, yeah, third the, and third image. Yeah. Third image after the main Main photo, right? Okay. So okay. get the main photo and then the third image. Yep. So okay. that's always the third. The fourth is multiple uses. So people want to see it in their life, right? So let's say, you know, you have a something that would work for indoors, outdoors, whatever, right? A quad photo is really good, but you want to show them, you want to explain like this lamp here will work for, you know, it's a great it night light. For, uh, outside, it works for inside, it works for office, it works for warehousing, and it works for a nightlight. And it also works, by the way, uh, to uh, make a ghost with a little blanket. Exactly. Whatever. Fun, and you're showing them. And because if you're only focused on the features and benefits of the light itself, and you're not helping them imagine it, they go, imagine oh my it. God, I need two of them. I want one for my nightstand and I want another one for my office. Mm -hmm. You know, you're, you're helping them. Or if they hadn't really thought about that, suddenly they're like, oh my gosh, my dad, he needs this for his yes. desk. I didn't even think about that, right? So that's always bullet point number four and that next image in the lineup. 
And, and I love doing, you know, that there, right. As far as like doing like a quad photo, showing all the different uses, um, or you could always do a how to use. So let's say it's a very, you know, like for me, uh, my, my litter box cleaner, like it's not really like, there's not really multiple uses. You use it to clean the yeah, litter yeah, box. Yeah. Right. So I'm showing a how to use four easy steps, you know, pour, dump, return the litter to the clean box and get on with your day. Mm -hmm. Like, that's what I'm showing in that bullet point number four in that photo, how easy it is to use and how great, you know, you're simplifying the process for them. And, and cause that's going to be one of their questions, right? The last bullet point and the um, second to last photo, I love to show it as a gift. And this is the big thing about keywords that people mistake. So many copywriters say it's a great gift for birthday, Christmas, Halloween, New Year's, nobody's searching for great gift for birthday, Christmas, Halloween, New Year's. No, that's, you're not going to rank for anything, nor is your PPC going to do well. If you try to rank for that gifting keyword, Rip that's ads. yes. You need to do the gifting keyword research. You need to make sure you write a whole bullet point for that. And then you need to represent that in a photo. If it's the best baby shower gift, you better represent that in the photo, right? Like get them so seeing that because, and, and, and there you're talking about like a, have a baby shower thing at the top. And then a mom, you know, she's pregnant and she's receiving the gift and she's super happy. That kind of represent yes. is literally get in the atmosphere of the gift. Yes, exactly. Exactly. And now if you don't, if you're selling headlights and you don't have a giftable product, then you want to show your authority in the space. Okay. So, you know, show all the different vehicles it works on show, you know, if you're showing, if you're, if you're selling iPhone cases, well then show, you know, something about, you know, your authority in the space, we you know, sold maybe X amount of iPhone cases, or we have X amount of reviews, or maybe we have, or maybe this is a good place for the comparison, right? Just to answer any final objections, you know, Hey, you know, ours has this extra dip to keep your iPhone from falling out of it or whatever. Right. But this could be a really good opportunity for supplements. I've helped a lot of supplements brands, you know, with their, so it's a great place to either, you know, explain the, the ingredients or explain explain um, their story. Like I had a guy who created his own supplement line based on the fact that he had a certain disease and was able to actually um, cure himself. And that's very powerful, you know? So to have a picture of that and like have, help the customer connect instead of in the supplement industry where everybody feels like, oh, I don't know, it's snake oil, right? Mm -hmm. it's, it's really important, right? So that's it. And then I always do one final lifestyle photo just to kind of get it in their life, right? Um, one, one additional bonus photo. And when we do photos, we also have a, a photography team at Amazing at Home. And when we do photos, we follow that, that methodology. Um, so it, it just really, really converts well. Um, so that's our five bullet points and our photos. So hopefully you guys took a lot from that and, um, and it'll help you improve your listings. The folks that have done our listing optimization masterclass when just changing out their photos with that sales process in mind, they hadn't even updated their listings yet. Their, their conversions increased immediately. That's awesome. That's awesome. And then could you maybe talk about out of the people in your class or ones that you've optimized? What are like the top selling products? You know, maybe a product was selling 50 units a day. You did it. Boom, I got up to 500 units a day or like sub 100 BSR in sports or like, what are like some of the top representations or top sellers that you've represented? Oh my gosh. I have products in every category. Like I can literally scroll through Amazon and see every, every category, like sometimes several on a page. <laughs> like, yeah. I mean, just while I was, I'm rewriting my listing optimization masterclass right now within my mastermind group, we're like reteaching it, you know, just updating it. Cause 2021 Amazon's like messing around with the capitalization and bullet points. They're like, they're changing a yeah, lot of things. We, we stopped it that we heard rumors. Yeah. At the beginning you will get shut down. And, you know, we saw the help page that actually said, you can't do that. Yeah. And I said, we're not taking no chances. We took it. Everything was taken off. And that was, a, you know, that was like started, I think with ASM, everybody has been doing it since. Yes. It was and, the best. Was, I mean, it, it does make it really readable. You know, it, it was the best practice, USP, you know? I mean, I think it was helpful. Yeah. But you, you have, you, can you confirm you've seen people that get shut down for that? Um, no, I have not personally seen people i've seen uh one listing get suppressed okay um in the communities that we talked about but 
they couldn't confirm that it was exactly for that. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, but at the same time, then I saw I in sorry. Yeah, I, I saw in the ASTG uh, group. Now, what I was telling people is like, look, we're in the middle of Q4 right now. It's best not to touch your listings. Like do not mess with your listings mm -hmm. right now. If you have one of those listings that's been good like that forever, don't go into your listings right now and mess with it. But if you do have to go into your listing for any reason to edit something, go ahead and fix it then. You know, so that's what I've been doing. Some of my listings still have caps in them. Some of my other ones I fixed just based on like, hey, I'm going into this. Let me go ahead and fix it at the same time. But, you know, I haven't seen like massive suppressions. I did polls in my groups about it. But anyway, I was, okay. I was rewriting. It's a, it's a potential threat. You know, yeah. have, you haven't, have you seen any difference when you changed it? Like conversion rates go down or have you tracked it? Not? I, I didn't notice anything. Mm -hmm. No, no problems uh, because you're not changing any keywords or anything. You know, it's when you like change out your title and stuff that you force a full re-index and you got to like start over again. And so I always tell people if they're selling really well, like, you know, don't change out your title. And that's a big mistake people make. They're constantly changing their listing. It's like, stop. <laughs> if you're selling really good, stop resetting everything, you know, but uh, but yeah, if you're not selling really good, you got nothing to lose, rewrite that sucker. But uh, yeah, so I was, but I was just rewriting my optimization masterclass when I was going through a category and I'm like, oh my gosh, I've written two, two products on this page. But I mean, confidential, conf confidentiality is obviously really important to everybody that I work with. So yeah, yeah, I'm not asking like, like hey, their, their products. whatever. Yo, yo, but, but yeah, but, in, in every category you can imagine, whether it's a storage basket for baby's room or a rug or a dog toy or a, we've done dog bowls, we've done, oh my, I can't even. What about like bestsellers? Do you have like a count of like how many like either become bestseller or you've done best, like number one in the subcategory, you know? I'm assuming you must have worked with several of those. Um, mostly just Amazon's choice badges. So we okay. get on page one. So we get on page one for that. And then we get a lot of Amazon's choice badges because when you're the most relevant, that's how you get those choice badges. So, um, yeah, I mean, I've seen people, I know like one guy that I'm working with now, he's in supplements. Oh, no, he's not in supplements. Sorry. That was another one. Um, he is in, um, a men's healthcare product. And we just moved him up to number one organic position on page one for his main keyword. And he has 5X his sales in under a month. Wow. Um, and yeah, that's, that's like, that's unheard of. Is that like a, a one, a, one, a, one product account or you're saying 5X on the, on the okay. Just one product account. Yep. And so, and what we did with him is we just optimized his listing, make sure it was good to go. And uh, we did some creative advertising. And then we also ran some Google ads, which, oh, by the way, a lot of people don't know the power of Google ads and that it's extremely powerful at ranking you because 60% of Amazon's external traffic comes from Google. Google's super cheap to run ads on. Like I'm talking 10 cents a click. Mm -hmm. And so if you're not running Google search ads, I'm not talking Google shopping ads, I'm talking Google search ads, because a lot of people, a lot of it comes from 60% comes from search. Um, and so it's 51% of Amazon's traffic. I was doing a, a traffic class in my mastermind group and 51% of Amazon's traffic is direct, meaning people are going directly to amazon.com. But of the 100% of external traffic outside of that mm -hmm. direct traffic, mm -hmm. right? 60% of that is search. Wow. So if you are missing, you're missing out if you're not running Google ads. And I can't tell you how many seven and eight figure sellers I've met who are like, I only do PPC. It's like, oh my gosh. You know, it's like this huge, you're, you're doing all this extra work. You know, when you think about like doing all these giveaways and stuff, that's external traffic. You're driving external traffic. And what happens, you know, a lot of people during launch will do all these giveaways, right? And then suddenly they get dropped down to like page 10 and they're like, wait, I was just on page one. What do you think you did? You pissed off the algorithm because you were sending all this external traffic and now all of it stopped because you stopped doing giveaways because you're on page one now. Yep. But if you run Google ads at the same time, there's no difference. You're getting diverse external traffic to your listings. So it's so stinking powerful. And a lot of people don't like to do it because it's hard to track your conversions. It is. Do, do you use the Amazon attribution or anything like that? Like, it sucks. It's so no, beta. It's, yeah. I, yeah I, I wish it was better, but um, yeah, I think, I think, yeah, Marisinko is like coming up with something for attribution. Well, like what for I, I'll tell you what I used to do. I used to use an Amazon associates link and it worked awesome. And I would yes. know, and I would know like, oh, wow. 40% of the people are buying a competitor's product, but at least I got paid on the link. 
However, Google, I know Amazon shut down that link because they, it's against the terms of service. So I was not, not able to continue doing that. Mm, um, and but, you want to use a two-step URL anyway, when you're doing Google ads, because it's going to help you rank for those keywords and stuff. So, yeah. I mean, that's, or but not. I, I stay away from, all, I stay away from everything, any, any ranking, anything, any giveaway, just, you know, on my podcast, I always will talk about that because listen, I've had people get, this year was like oh, 2020, sorry, 2020 was like the year of warnings. So many people got warnings for review manipulation, rank manipulation, odd stuff. And I believe some of that comes from these two-step URLs. Um, of course. Yes, but, but in terms of, we're not using them um, uh, with re with uh, like um, rebates or anything like that. We're just using it with yeah, Google yeah, Ads. And we've been doing that for years and it's not, you know, it's, and we're not using like manipulative. It's not like, oh, add to cart or it's just like. Yeah, yeah exactly. You're just getting to URLs. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, I understand. but I, I agree with you. Lot. Like I, I ran them until we got the warning and I was like, I have no idea what else it could be. It must be this. And we stopped it. So that was, that's just me. You know, that's just, mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, and we manage a lot of people's Google ads accounts too. So it's just like, I, we've been testing it for so long and we've never had any issues whatsoever. We have seen people get in trouble using like the manipulative URLs mm -hmm. and then as well as combining those with like rebates or giveaways, but we're just running normal, normal Google ads with a normal keyword URL. So it works pretty well, but anyway, so that was, that was his story. And it just, it really just sticks the landing on your ranking. So I just, my big tip for people when they're launching is choose three forms of external traffic. And, you know, some of them can be organic. That's cool. But man, Amazon's algorithm loves it. But it's also true. make sure that your listing's good because that's right. Foundational. That so good. Mm -hmm. So we've covered like everything from creating a product all the way to like <laughs> ranking and, and, and oh, listing yeah. apps. One thing that we uh, didn't get was... Um, so you, you mentioned 2017 and then, so when were you able to then quit? I guess you, this Fiverr thing happened. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Fiverr agency, and then when did <laughs> like, you know. Okay, so first we brought my husband home from his job. He was a teacher. Um, so we brought him home from his job and he was just working in our private label brand and he was just managing the day to day. And so we weren't paying him. We were just reinvesting and I was making good money at my job, right? Mm -hmm. And then, um, and that was in, the early 2018 when we brought him home nice, nice. and then amazing at home grew so fast. So some of the people I was consulting with, they were making big money and then they were getting up at these summits and stuff like that and saying like, I made, mm. I made all this money or they were getting awards or whatever. And they'd be like, Amy, Amy helped me, you know? And so before I knew it, like I've never done any paid ads for amazing at home. It just grew organically and it was just like insane. So I was literally, I would come home from my job, um, you know, running a cybersecurity team. I would come home from my job and I would be on calls five o'clock, six o'clock, seven o'clock, eight o'clock, nine o'clock, oh and then go to bed at 10 o'clock, get up in the morning, go to the gym, do it all over again. I got to the point where I was turning down people. I was going out to my car on my lunch hour and taking calls. <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, like I can't, I was so overwhelmed and I told my husband, you know, I, I was overwhelmed on the weekends. I got to the point where I was like, even if I worked all week long, all weekend long and took, and I was taking time off of work, I would take time off of work like two weeks at a time and I still couldn't catch up. Yeah, yeah. And I told my husband, I was like, I can't, I can't keep this up. Like I can't be performer at work. I, I, I'm not good at anything right now, mm -hmm. you know? And uh, I had a friend who, um, it was funny because, and this is such a pivotal moment because my husband was having a barbecue with some of his men's group friends and they were coming over to the house. And I was in this mindset where I was like, you know what? I don't want to be the good wife and go outside and like hang out with these people because I have work to do and I'm building something here. Right. But anyway, you know, and, and they're not going to understand me. They're the nine to five job working people, you know, they're not going to care. And, you know, you're kind of become the outcast when you're like the entrepreneur. Right. So I go outside. I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to let go of that. I'm going to be a good wife. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to mingle. And so I go outside and I'm talking to this guy and there's two entrepreneurs outside and, mm -hmm. um, and they're, they're friends of ours from our church. And I was like, oh my gosh, I didn't know that about you guys. And so they were like, we should just meet each other just once a week, get on Zoom and just chat, you know? And Efton, the guy, uh, he was like, Amy, you have to quit your job. 
on our first meeting together, he was like, you have to quit your job. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, dude, I paid the mortgage on this damn Texas castle. (laughs) Like I can't just quit my job, my six figure amazing job. You don't just quit a perfectly good job. And Efton was like, didn't you just tell me that you were turning down clients? And I was like, well, yeah, but I can't, no, I can't just quit my job. And he was like, you need to quit your job. And so he helped me kind of figure that out. He helped me navigate that. He he was like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to make sure that we have enough money to pay the bills so that you can just focus on the business full time. And you don't have to worry about like paying yourself, taking money out of the business because that's overwhelming when you start. So he's like, we're just going to make sure you have money set aside. We're going to make sure you have a plan and then you're going to set a date and you're going to take the leap. And that's what I did. Like he held my hand through that and I was scared. I was terrified. And I I took the leap October 27th of 2018. And, um, and yeah, that's my, that's my anniversary. anniversary. October But your wedding anniversary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, cool. Hey, yeah, freedom. <laughs> yeah. Good day. It's a good day. Yeah. So, you know, that was when that was when I came home. And within three months, I had tripled my previous income. Wow. That's amazing. Congrats. Congrats. Yeah. And I had no idea. On your own, taking the risk and being around other entrepreneurs who were helping you in the right way. Of course, yes. it's never a good idea to leave your job unless you can cover the bills, unless you already have other money. But at some point, it becomes a liability. So that's yeah. uh, that's amazing. Your your buddy is is awesome. So glad, uh, church buddy. That's awesome. Um, so uh, yes, we have gone over many things, as you were saying, and I'm keeping you for a long time. And I know your time is money, and that is that is the truth. Okay. So, um, any final things you want to say? Again, amazing at home. That is your consulting, coaching, masterclass, everything. Amy Weiss, you want to learn and become that amazing at writing copy making amazon listings go check her out uh do some consulting i mean guys if you just want to get on a call so many people want to get on a call and i'm like i don't have time to be on a call but uh, amy definitely has time to be on a call you need help with your products if you're trying if you have an idea for a product and you're not sure how to make it happen if you don't know how to find suppliers if you i mean i do negotiation sessions with my clients suppliers like you would not believe the stuff that, you know, that I can help you with. So if you guys ever need help and you're just needing, looking for some direction in your business, reach out anytime. I do have a free listing optimization um, or listing review service. So okay. this is something that's very popular with people. You can go to amazingathome.com and go underneath services. And there's a little thing that says listing review, mm. Amazon listing review, and it's free. And you just fill out the little form and I personally send you a video of exactly. So whether you're having trouble with your PPC, whatever it is, you got low sales, whatever it is, that's where it all starts. So I love doing that. I'm a total nerd about these things. So send it to me. It's joyous for me. I like it. So send me your listing. Let me know what's going on and what you'd like me to look at. I'll give you straight up opinion on your photos, whatever, you know, your copy, your title, your PPC. If you're like, I don't know what's going on. I can't find my ads. I don't, you know, I'll give you a little keyword analysis, whatever. I'll spend a couple of minutes and I'll send you a video of me explaining what's going on with your listing. Happy to do that. I love doing it. So amazing. I love that. We should maybe even do one live. I, I love doing that too, by the way. I have some on my YouTube channel. I have like analyzing this product and analyzing whatever. It's, it, it is fun. And I'll, you know, anyway, so that's an idea. We might do it sometime, maybe live. It'll be fun um, and see where we might have different opinions, you know, or the same opinion. I don't know. Yeah, I love that, Aaron. Thanks so much for having me. Seriously, that was so much fun. Awesome, awesome. I agree. Okay, everybody. uh, Thanks so much. And thank you for coming on the show. And uh, see you later.